I'm at Fremont Lake near Pinedale, Wyoming. And I'm going to load up my Katana 9.7. And I'm going to paddle across the lake today. My goal is to get all the way around it. Um, I'm not going to do it in one day. I'm going to bring some camping gear and paddle close to the end, near the end. We'll just see how far I get this afternoon. Um, maybe do some fishing tonight. Then uh, camp in my hammock and get up in the morning and finish the rest of the route around the lake. So i pretty confident it's about nine miles to the end of the lake. I was out here in, well, it was probably March on my fat bike when the lake was frozen over and I actually rode to the end and back and it was about an 18 mile trip. So it'll be a long couple of days of paddling for sure, but um, pretty excited about it. So I'm going to be paddling the uh, Katana 9.7. I picked this up last year. Um, it's a boat by Dagger Kayaks. And the idea behind this boat is that it's what they call a hybrid. So it's designed for both white water and for flat water. Um, I have had it out on the river a couple of times. Had it on the Falls River. And I've had it down the Salmon River, but I actually haven't used it a ton in the flat water. I've only had it out on the lake like maybe one time, maybe twice. Um, one advantage of the Katana is that it has this drop down skeg. So if you release the skeg here, you'll notice that on the stern, we end up with this skeg that drops down into the water and allows you to track a lot better. Um, that way you're not wasting energy trying to keep your boat straight. It just is going to flow straight for you. And then when you want to raise that, so if you're in white water and you wanted to raise that, you just pull on this and you'll see that that skeg just goes up nice and easy. So it also has this hatch in the back. So in my white water adventures, um, it did a pretty good job of keeping the water sealed out. So got some room in here for my gear. So I'll, I've got a load of dry bags and stuff with camping gear and food and clothes. So I'll put that in the back. It also has some good space right here behind the seat. So in this area, there's room for a, a good size dry bag, um, whatever else you need to fit in there. So I'll load it up. Um, I think I have about 20 to 25 pounds worth of gear. Um, if I was packing this for a whitewater trip, I'd make sure that I'm gonna get um, as much of the weight, I would say, central as possible. You don't want the heavier weight out on the ends just because it makes it a little more difficult to maneuver where if that weight is more in the center of your boat you get less of that swing weight that resistance um there's also some space in the front of the boat so where the the foot braces are you can actually pull that out i don't know if you can see in there it might be a weird angle but anyways i can pull those out and behind that plastic area there's some more room that i can put some more gear i probably won't be utilizing it during this trip scenario maybe two miles an hour between one and two miles an hour it's kind of a funny story how I picked up this kayak so it's been out for a few years now the dagger katana 
It comes in two different sizes. Uh, there's a larger size, which is like a 10.2 or 10.4. I can't remember exactly what it is. And then uh, there's this one, which is a 9.7. Um, I'm a little shorter. I'm 5'6". I'm about 170 pounds. Wish it was more like 160 pounds. I'll have to work on that a little bit. But uh, anyways, there's a bolt that I was looking for. I want it because I want to. My ultimate goal is to take it down the middle fork of the salmon on a self-support kayak trip. And ultimately, I'd love to do a solo trip down the middle fork. And so this was the boat, kind of, in my opinion, that's designed for that. It's perfectly designed for a self-support middle fork trip. So I've, I was looking for years, a couple years, just trying to find a good deal because I'm a whitewater kayaker by nature and most whitewater kayakers are pretty cheap so we don't like to spend a lot of money on our gear so I never like to pay full price so I was looking for a good discount somewhere I'm trying to find a used one. So I was looking on eBay and I saw that there was one up for auction and um, it, reading the description the guy said you know that it's pickup only and that he was located in Fort Collins Colorado so that uh, about five maybe five and a half hours from where I live so well, that's not bad and I would say already that this is a what I would classify as a niche boat meaning that there's not a lot of people looking for this particular boat unless you're a weirdo like me and want to do a, a solo down the uh, middle fork of the Salmon River. So anyways, I, I feel like that already kind of limited his market with the fact that there's probably not a ton of people looking for the boat, at least not at that period of time. And then secondly, the fact that he advertised it as pickup only really narrowed his market down. Um, it was at about $200 on eBay, and it was closing on like a Friday, so I just watched it and watched it and watched it. I just kind of determined, okay, what's the most I'm willing to pay for this thing? And I figured out, you know, 500 is probably a pretty fair price. And so I, you know, with seconds left in the auction, I put my maximum bid in as $500. Time runs out, damn. I get the boat, $210. Like, man, I can't believe that. Like, I know what this boat is. I know that it retails for about $1,200. Like, man, that is amazing. So anyways, the guy uh, gets a hold of me so we can make arrangements to uh, pick up the boat. I told him, I said, man, I said, that's a great deal. I feel kind of guilty winning it for $200, $210. I said, you know what, I tell you, I just couldn't take it off your hands for $200. When I come and pick it up, I'm gonna bring an extra $200. I'll pay you $400 for it. He's like, no, you don't have to do that. And I said, I know I don't have to, but I, I know that this is a really nice boat and it's in good condition, and I feel guilty otherwise. So anyways, we, we made arrangements and I drove down to Fort Collins and picked it up. And sure enough, man, it still has like the, the barcode sticker on the back, it's that new. And so the guy says, you know, you don't really have to give me the $200. And I said, I know, but I said that I would. So I gave him the extra $200 and I drove home and I felt pretty happy about it. So, you know, $400 plus a little gas money, I don't feel bad about it. It's still a great price, practically brand new. Probably most of the scratches that are in it are for me, taking it down the Falls River and the Salmon River. It looks like a motorboat, water ski boat just went through here. It's created a few waves, which is fun. Breaking up my monotonous flat water. Hopefully they make some more. It'd be nice if you created a wake for me that I could just surf for about a mile or so. The wind has picked up a little bit at my back, which is awesome. I'll take the tail wheel like wind any day on this side. So just around this corner, there's a little cove and a dock, and I'll probably stop here for just a minute. There's a little rope swing, 
probably jump off that a couple of times, see if I can cool off. It's honestly not bad because we got this breeze, but the overall temperature right now is about 86 degrees. I've been back here a few times with my jet skis. Nice little spot. nice and refreshing the other nice thing I like about this katana is it has this little pouch in the inside put stuff in it and it just snaps in great place for me to store my phone easy access purse for a kayak man bag whatever it makes you feel more manly we will continue the journey Generally a white water enthusiast. I love that adrenaline rush that you get going down the river. But there's also something to be said for just the smooth quietness of floating across white or uh, flat water. I just like the sound that the boat makes as it slides gracefully over this flat stuff. It's therapeutic. You almost get into a rhythm that you don't even think about. You're just paddling and subconsciously moving forward and not even realizing. You don't have to even tell yourself, hey, take a stroke on the right, take a stroke on the left. It just happens. I've been paddling just under two and a half hours. And I can see the end of the lake now. Probably another 45 minutes to an hour until I reach the end. I've made it to the end of the lake. I'm going to paddle up this uh, outlet for just a little bit. See what happens, see what it turns into.
rock that's sticking out in front of me. There's kind of a cove there. I think that's where I'm gonna go look for a camp spot for tonight. Looks like there's plenty of trees for hammocks and looks kind of peaceful and calm. Hopefully there's some good fishing. So that's the spot I think for this evening. Looks like there's a family camp in that cove, so I'm gonna wrap around this rock and find myself another spot. I'm sure there's plenty of room. Well, this point looks just as good as any other spot, so I think we'll call this camp for tonight. Huddled another half an hour from the end of the lake to where I stopped tonight and then did a little fishing once the wind died down and actually caught a little fish, a little trout, so I'm cooking that up tonight and hopefully it turns out alright. I just wrapped it in tin foil and then I'm cooking it over these hot coals. I didn't remember to bring any seasoning or anything but guess we'll just find out how it tastes all natural. 8.15 in the morning, so I slept pretty well last night. I got up mm, probably between 6 and 7 o'clock and tried my hand at fishing a little bit. Didn't have any success. Um, so I'll probably just pack up here and uh, just head on back down to the, the end of the lake, finish up this trip. I started this boat ramp here on the southwest end of Fremont Lake. I paddled all the way up to the end of the lake yesterday. And then I came back down here and I'm camping right here on this rock at Moosehead Bay. Yesterday, it probably took me three hours of paddling to get to this point right here. So I'm guessing I'm less than three hours unless the wind picks up. you notice as I paddle, it tracks pretty well. The skeg is down right now, so if I was to stop paddling, it pretty much just stays in a straight line. 
Now, if I pull the skeg up, first of all, it takes a little more effort to keep it going in a straight line. But, if I stop paddling, see how I spin out? Which is nice when you're in white water to be able to maneuver like that, but when your goal is to get across a long lake, that doesn't help very much. So this is the boat ramp on the east side of the lake. The upper boat ramp, probably a couple miles up the road. Roll that kayak with it fully loaded, and then we'll open up the hatch afterwards and see how dry it is. take a look and see how the hatch did after those rolls. Alright, I'll open it up and we'll see if anything's wet. Well, it looks pretty darn dry to me. As I pull stuff out. bag is perfectly dry so that hatch does a really good job of sealing out water so like I said I've had it on the river and didn't have really any issues with it um, you know didn't have to roll on this trip but obviously it kept it pretty dry <laughs> 